Welcome to HVAC exam practice test. Our topic today is commercial air conditioning. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. What is the approximate pressure when setting a high pressure cutout on a R410A system which has an air-cooled condenser? A. 305 sig. B. 375 sig. C. 417 sig. D. 610 sig. The answer is D. 610 sig. Explanation. The pressure must be set above the working pressure for an R410A system. The design condensing temperature is from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure is 417 psi for 120 degree condensing temperature. The cutout must be set approximately 45% to 50% above the operating pressure. Number 2. When is the installation of a P-trap mandatory in a drain line? A. When the evaporator coil is located after a heat exchanger. B. When the evaporator coil is located on the positive side of the blower. C. When the evaporator is an A-type coil. D. When the evaporator coil is located on the negative side of the blower. The answer is D. When the evaporator coil is located on the negative side of the blower. Explanation. Due to the negative pressure, without a peat wrap air will be sucked through the drain and will block the flow of condensate. Number 3. What should a pump down system have? A. A liquid receiver. B. An oil separator. C. A low pressure safety. D. A suction accumulator. The answer is A. A liquid receiver. Explanation. Depending on the size of the evaporator and liquid line, the condenser may not be large enough to hold all the refrigerant during pump down. Number 4. What is a liquid receiver used for? A. To prevent liquid refrigerant from reaching the compressor. B. To separate oil from the liquid refrigerant. C. To store liquid refrigerant. D. To separate refrigerant vapor from the liquid. The answer is C. To store liquid refrigerant. Explanation. A receiver is used to store liquid refrigerant for varying loads, multi-evaporators and pump down. Number 5. The oil pressure safety switch is operated by which of the following? A. The sum of suction pressure and oil pump pressure. B. The sum of oil pump pressure and crankcase pressure. C. The difference between crankcase pressure and oil pump pressure. D. The difference between head pressure and oil pump pressure. The answer is C. The difference between crankcase pressure and oil pump pressure. Explanation. Oil pump is located inside the compressor, therefore it must compensate for surrounding refrigerant pressure. The difference between the measured oil pressure and the crankcase pressure is the net oil pressure. Number 6. To control capacity, which of the following is the hot gas from the bypass valve piped into? A. Distributor tube manifold. B. Evaporator outlet. C. Suction line between the receiver and compressor. D. Suction line before the compressor. The answer is D. Suction line before the compressor. Explanation. By piping the hot gas back into the suction line, the compressor pumping efficiency is reduced. Number 7. Which of the following is the opening force on a water regulating valve being used on a water cooled condenser? A. The low side pressure. B. The high side pressure. C. The crankcase pressure. D. The spring pressure. The answer is B. The high side pressure. Explanation. The regulating valve must sense the pressure that is trying to control. Number 8. What is the G terminal used for on a heating and cooling thermostat? A. The common terminal. B. The contactor coil. C. The blower relay. D. The gas valve. The 
The answer is C. The blower relay. Explanation. The G-terminal is used to control the indoor blower relay on most thermostats. Number 9. Why do multiple compressor systems have a balance line? A. To maintain equal loads on all compressors during operation. B. To maintain equal oil levels on all compressors. C. To compensate for different pressures. D. To compensate for evaporator pressure drop. The answer is B. To maintain equal oil levels on all compressors. Explanation. When multiple compressors are used in conjunction with each other, it is important to keep the oil level the same in all the compressors. Number 10. When should a thermostatic expansion valve with an external equalization line be used? A. When the evaporator has a pressure drop that causes more than 2 degrees Fahrenheit saturation temperature change. B. When the evaporator has a pressure drop that causes less than 2 degrees Fahrenheit saturation temperature change. C. When the system is charged with HFC refrigerant. D. When the condenser has a high pressure drop. The answer is A. When the evaporator has a pressure drop that causes more than 2 degrees Fahrenheit saturation temperature change. Explanation. Due to pressure temperature relationship, thermostatic expansion valves must sense the correct pressure at the location of the thermal bulb to maintain the correct superheat. Pressure drop is usually caused by size or capacity of the evaporator, taking into account the number of U bends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.